Hello, my name is Alan Bow, and this is a video explaining how to scaffold a SaaS project using VS Code and SaaS.js. I'm really excited actually to be sharing this video because what I've seen in previous projects, especially on Fire, is a tendency for developers to store their source code in SaaS Fire jobs on SaaS Drive which is fine, it works, it's fast. However, you don't get the benefits of having your code in source control, using your preferred IDE, uh, working locally, um, etc. So, so, so really what I'm presenting here is a paradigm change in the way that you might build and deploy a, a SaaS project, be that a data science project, a series of, of SaaS jobs, uh, or a web application with SaaS at the back end. There are some prerequisites uh, to follow this through. Uh, that is that you understand SAS programming, specifically macros and what file refs are. The command line will be building and deploying using the SAS.js CLI command line interface. And also, although the CLI also works with SAS 9, we'll be focusing here on VIA and specifically the job execution service. There's also some prerequisites in terms of tools. So Node.js, which is the, the, the runtime for, for the CLI. Uh, with that, you get Node Package Manager, NPM. And also, you'll need to install the SAS.js CLI, which is a very easy thing to do if you've got NPM. So to get started then, from the command line here in VS Code, I'm going to uh, run the SAS.js create demo command using T for template jobs. So this is a, a template repository that already has a bunch of jobs and macros in it. That's now created that folder. And within that, probably the most important, or the most important folder is a SAS.js folder. And then within that, there's a SAS.js config file. And this config file will tell me where my jobs are stored in this folder. For those jobs where the macros are stored, this is local. I can also define a job in it and a job term file. Any programs, SAS programs like data lines or DDL. Uh, so those are generic things. And then there's also a target defined. And this is where I will deploy my project uh, on a server. So I've called this target via and this app lock is where the jobs will get created. It's the root folder in SAS drive. So now if I go into the jobs folder and I open one of these jobs, I can see that this job has a header. And within that header, there's a this section here. So I've listed my SAS macros, example.sas. This is here in my local folder under the macros folder, example.sas, and also SAS programs. Now, with SAS macros, if I want to have that inside my job, I can simply copy paste that macro definition and stick it at the beginning of my job and it will be compiled and ready to use. SAS programs, however, are compiled when they are run. What will they run when, when they are run? <laughs> um, and so it's not like you can kind of stick them at the beginning of your SAS program because that might not be what you expect. So the way that this framework works if you have a, a SAS program dependency is it actually compiles that file or it writes it to a file ref. So you refer here to your SAS program, which is coming from the SAS programs folder, which is uh, what well, it was defined as this folder. I've got three files there. One's a DDL file, the other two are SAS programs. And you also define a file ref. So you can choose this file ref, it has to be eight characters, start with a, a letter or underscore. And then what can happen is if you need to reference that SAS program, you can simply percent include it. So now my job is quite clean. I've just got my macro, which I defined above, my two file refs, uh, run some SAS code, uh, and this is my job. Now, how do I get this job? Well, first of all, how do I get these programs and macros into this job definition? And that's where the first SAS.js command comes in. So I'm going to firstly change into that demo folder and run a SAS.js compile step. And what that does is it takes all of my SAS jobs and then in a temporary folder called SAS.js build, if I can find it here on the left, 
will create one file per job. And this file contains all of the dependencies. So I can see here's my macro definition. Here's my uh, SAS program dependency wrapped in put statements. Um, scroll down a bit further, I can see my uh, job init program is inserted. Then I have my actual job. And then finally, I have a, a job term. So that's great. I've now got one file per job. How do I get that into SAS Fire? So I have a lot of jobs. It can be tedious to do them all separately. So I run a SAS.js build step. And what that does, it takes all of those individual jobs and creates a JSON file ready to deploy. It also creates a build.sas file. So if, if you don't have uh, the client secret, which we'll need in the next step, you can actually just run this, copy paste this SAS program, and that will also create your jobs in Fire. But let's go the, uh, the API route. Now, before I can deploy this JSON file, I need a, a, uh, an authorization token. So in order to get that, I can run the sas.js add cred command, and I'm gonna add it to the existing via target. That will give me a series of prompts. The first one being, uh, what is the target URL? So I'll put here the address of uh, our server, our SAS server, and the client ID. I've got an example here. Client secret. And then what I'll need to do next is authenticate against that client and secret. And that will give me an authorization code, which I can then paste back in here. And that's successfully added. And, and that those credentials are now stored in a .env file in my project. And that .env file is .git ignored. This git ignore file says all of the folders that are ignored by git. Uh, and here's my updated credentials file. Oh, no, that's not it. Where is it? There it is, env.via, which is my target. Uh, so that's ready. I can now sas.js deploy that, uh, that, that JSON file to, to the server. So I didn't actually mention a target then, so it just took the first. Um, there was three steps there, but if you're iterating, you don't actually have to take three steps. You can do SASJS CBD, which stands for compile, build, and deploy. So you can do all three at once. And then once that's deployed, the next thing you'll probably want to do is run your job. Now, the command for that is in this file here called package.json. This is a an NPM standard JSON file, and you can define scripts inside it. So within this uh, JSON file, here's my command. I can copy paste this command and run it here. And what that will do, it will use my auth token and refresh token and actually run that job on the SAS server. The, the SAS log gets written to the SAS.js build file. Um, so that's great. Um, when you have commands in a package.json file with npm, you can use this syntax, npm run, and then any of these aliases here. So I could also run uh, npm run exec, and that's an alias for sas.js job execute. So doing the same thing there, running that job. Now, what if I've got loads of these jobs and they're all dependent on each other? Uh, it would be nice to make a flow. Uh, so that's also possible with sas.js. So within the uh, SASJS folder, there's a definition here, a JSON file, where you can define your jobs and their predecessors. So you put the, the relative or you can put the full path. If it's a relative path, then it uses the app lock as the root. And then what I can do to run this flow, if I go back to the package JSON, uh, here's the command. I'll just run npm run flow, which is an alias for sas.js flow execute. And then you say the source file, which is the JSON file with the with the flow in it. And then the logs sticking in the sas.js build folder. And there's also a CSV file, which is output, which tells me the success uh, of each job. And if, and if any job in any particular flow fails, then the, the subsequent uh, 
part of the flow won't run. So that's done. And then if I wanted to maybe tidy up and delete the, the folder that I created, I can also run the sas.js folder delete, and that will delete the folder. So uh, yeah, I hope that was interesting. If, uh, if you'd like to know more about sas.js, the documentation for the CLI is on cli.sasjs.io, and you can see all of the commands here on the front page.